Jack Torrance. I'm here from an interview to look after the Overlook this winter. Oh, well, come on in, Jack. It's very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Miss Olin. Have any trouble finding us? No trouble at all. I made the trip. In three and a half hours. Oh, well, please sit down a minute. Make yourself at home. So, Jack, you're a school teacher? Formerly a school teacher. I'm a writer now. Teaching has been more or less a way of making ends meet. Our people in Denver recommended you very highly. Did they give you an idea about what the job entails? Only in a very general way. Well, the winters here can be fantastically cruel. Cool. Physically, it's not a very demanding job. The only thing that can get a bit trying up here during the winter is the uh, tremendous sense of isolation. Well, that happens to be exactly what I'm looking for. You know, I'm outlining a new writing project, and five months of peace is just what I want. That's very good, Jack, because for some people, solitude and isolation can itself be a problem. Well, not for me. Great. Well, before I give you the tour, there's one other thing I think we should talk about. I don't want to sound melodramatic, but it has been known to give a few people second thoughts about the job. I don't suppose they uh, told you anything in Denver about the tragedy we had up here during the, the winter of 1970. No, I don't believe they did. Well, my predecessor in this job hired a man named Delbert Grady as the winter caretaker. He came up here with his, his wife, wife and two little girls of about eight or ten. He had a good employment record, good references, and from what I've been told, he seemed like a completely normal individual. But he must have suffered some kind of complete mental breakdown. He, he ran, ran amok! Ah! Failing with an axe, stacked them neatly in one of the grooves, they were both buried and shot in the ground. The place they thought it was what the old timers used to call cabin fever, a kind of claustrophobic reaction which can occur when people are shut in together for long periods of time. It's still hard for me to believe that something like that actually happened here, but I think you can appreciate why I wanted to tell you about it. I certainly can, and I also see why people in Denver left that for you to tell me. Well, obviously some people can be put off by the idea of staying alone in a place where something like that actually happens. <laughs> well, you can rest assured, Miss Olman, that well, that won't be a problem with me. And as far as my wife is concerned, I'm, I'm sure she'll be absolutely fascinated. She's a confirmed ghost story and horror film addict. <laughs> Daddy will get the job? Yeah, he did. He's gonna phone Winnie up in a few minutes to tell her. Tony, Tony why, why don't you want to go to the hotel? I don't know. You, you do too, know. Now come on, on, tell me. I don't want to. Please, no. Now, Tony, tell me. All right, now, Danny, you open your eye for me. All right, now, Danny. Now, Danny, could you tell me exactly what you were doing before you were brushing? Uh, talking to Tony. Tony is his imaginary friend. Oh God, does Tony ever tell you to do things? I don't want to talk about Tony anymore. Well, that's all right now, Danny. Could you do me a favor? Could you go to your bedroom and rest for the rest of the day? We're just going to go into one of the other rooms for a few minutes and talk. Then I'll come back and check on you, okay? Okay. Mrs. Torrance, I don't think you have anything to worry about. There's nothing physically wrong with Danny. Oh yeah, he seems absolutely fine now. You should have seen him. I know, kids, kids can scare you half to death. But believe me, these episodes with kids are not uncommon. They're brought on by emotional, emotional factors, and, and they rarely occur again. Did Tony's first appearance coincide with your arrival here? Well, um, I guess Danny started talking to Tony about the time we put him into nursery school. Oh, God, you mean just went out of school? No, he didn't like it too much at first. <clears throat> and then he had an injury, so we kept him out for a while. And yeah, I guess that's about when I first noticed he was talking to Tony. Oh, well. What sort of injury did he have? Um, he dislocated his shoulder. How did he manage to do that? Oh, it was just well, one of those things, you know, purely an accident. Um, my husband had been drinking. Well, Danny had scattered his school papers everywhere, so we grabbed him by the arm just to pull him away from them. It, it's, it's just the sort, sort of thing you do a hundred times with a child. But on this particular occasion, my husband just used too much strength. He, he injured, injured Danny's arm. arm. But anyways, uh, something good did come out of hell because he said, Wendy, I'm never going to touch another drop. And, and if I do, you can leave me. And he didn't. And he hasn't had any alcohol in five months. Oh, well, uh, there were a party of 
settlers in covered wagon time. They got snowbound one winter up in these mountains. They had to resort to cannibalism in order to stay alive. <laughs> you mean they ate each other oh, up? Yeah. They had to, Danny, in order to survive. <laughs> Jack, it's OK, Mom. I know all about cannibalism. I saw it on TV. See, honey, you saw it all on the television. <laughs> Closing day. Good morning, Jack. I hope you haven't been waiting too long. Is your family having a good look around? No, but well, I'm sure my son's discovered the games room. Oh, fine. I suggest we get started straight away. Here is our Colorado Lounge. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, this my old gosh, this place is fantastic, isn't it, honey? <laughs> oh, this old place has had an illustrious past. In its heyday, it was one of the stopping places for the Jet Set. Even before anybody knew what a Jet Set was, we've had four presidents, lots, lots of movie stars, stars, royalty, all the best people. Here are your quarters. Cozy. Yes, very cozy. And if you feel like spreading out, you have the rest of the hotel to move around in. This is our famous head yes, space. It is quite an attraction around here. When was Stephen Hawks built? Uh, construction started in 1907. And it was finished in 1909. It's supposed to be located on an Indian burial ground. That's our snow cap. Can you both drive a car? Yes. That's good, because basically it runs very much like a car. This is our gold ballroom. Boy, I bet we could have a really great party in here, huh? I'm afraid you're not going to do too well unless you brought your own supplies. See, we always move all booze from the premises when we shut down. We don't drink. Oh, well, then you're in luck. Oh, Dick, come on over here and say hello to Mr. and Mrs. Torrin. Sure. This is Dick Howard, our head chef. Hi, Mr. Howard. Well, well, I'm Jack Torrenson. This is my wife, Winifred. Glad to meet you, Jack. Glad to meet you, Winifred. <laughs> Thanks. Torrances are going to take care of the overlook for us this winter. Oh, that's just great. How do you guys like the hotel so far? Oh, it's just wonderful. Hi, Danny. Danny, you got tired of bombing the universe already? <laughs> yeah. Danny, come on over here. Howler and I think it would be a good idea if you can show Miss Torrance the kitchen while I continue on with Jack. Mm, it will be a pleasure. Right this way, Mrs. Torrance. Great. See you later, hon. Bye, darling. Gosh, this is the kitchen, huh? Yeah. Well, one thing for sure is that you don't have to worry about food here because you have to be here for a whole year and never have to say a meal twice. Right now, right here, this is the welcome kitchen. We're going to keep all of our meals. You've got 12 turkeys, 2 dozen pork rolls, and 20 legs of lamb. Do you like lamb, Doc? No. You don't? Mr. Howard, how did you know we called him Doc? Beg pardon? Doc, you called Danny Doc? I did. Well, I probably heard him call him that before. Well, it's possible. I just honestly don't remember calling him that since we've been with you. Hmm. Well, anyway, doesn't he look like a doc? Man, what's up, doc? Now, right here, this is our storm. In here, Miss Torrance, we're going to give all of our dry goods and canned goods. We also got 30 small pound baskets of rice, rice big rolls, and seven kinds of what have you. How are you getting on? Just fine. Is it okay if we borrow Miss Torrance for a few minutes? I promise we won't. No problem, Miss Solomon. I'll just get her some ice cream. Do you folks don't mind if I get Danny some ice cream? Not at all. Good. How good to you, Danny? Yeah. All right, now you behave yourself. Now, Danny, what kind of ice cream do you like? Uh, chocolate. Ooh, great. Chocolate shall be. Now, come on, son. Do you know how I knew your name was Doc? Do you even know what I'm talking about, don't you? I can remember. My grandmother ran the whole conversation entirely without ever opening our mouths. She called it The Shining by, by Stephen King, based on the screenplay by Stanley Kubrick and Diane Johnson. And for a long time, I thought just the two of us had the shot to us, just like you probably thought you was the only one. But there are other folks. They mostly don't know it or don't, don't believe it. it. How long have you been able to do it? Why don't you want to talk about it? I'm not supposed to. <laughs> Who says you were supposed to? Tony. Who is Tony? Tony's a little boy who lives in my mouth. Is Tony the one that tells you things? Uh, yes. Has Tony ever told you anything about this place? I don't know. Mr. Halloran, are you scared of this place? I'm scared of nothing here. It's just that you know some places are like some people. Some shine and some others don't. I guess you can see the Overlook Hotel. Here's something about it. It's like shiny. Is there something bad here? Well, you know, Danny, when something bad happens here, you can leave a trace behind. 
Not things that anyone can notice, but things that people who shine can see. Well, sometimes, they can see things that happened a long time ago, right here in this particular hotel. Not, Not all of them were good. good. What about room 237? You're scared of room 237? Ain't ya? No, I ain't. Mr. Halloran, what's in room 237? Nothing. There ain't nothing in room 237. You ain't got no business going in there anyway. So stay out. You understand? Stay out! A month later. Good morning, honey. Your breakfast is ready. I made them just the way you like them. Sunny side up. Oh, thanks. Gosh, it's really nice up here, isn't it? It's amazing how fast you can get used to such a big place. I tell you, when we first came up here, I thought it was kind of scary. Well, I fell in love with it right away. I mean, Feels like I've been here before, you know? I guess we all have moments of deja vu. This is kind of ridiculous. I mean, it's almost like I know it's going to be around every corner. Tuesday! Hi, hon. How's it going? Fine. Getting a lot written today? Yeah. Hey, the weather forecast said it's going to snow tonight. Oh, well, what do you want me to do about it? Oh, come on, hon. Don't be so grouchy. I'm not being grouchy. I just want to finish my work, so, uh. Okay. I understand. I'll come back later on with a couple of sandwiches and maybe I'll let you read something then. Wendy, whenever you come down here and interrupt me, you're distracting me. You're. And then it takes me time to get back to where I was. Understand? Yes. Well, Wendy, let's make a new rule. Whenever I'm down here and well, you hear me typing, and whether you don't hear me typing, or whatever the heck you hear me doing down here, when I'm down here, that means I'm working. That means. Don't come in! Now, do you think you can handle that? Why don't you start right now and get out of here? Hmm? This is KDK 12 to KDK 1. KDK 12 to KDK 1. This is KDK 1. We're receiving you. Over. Hi, this is Wendy Torrance of the Overlook Hotel. Hi, Mrs. Torrance. How are you folks getting on up there? Just fine. But our telephones don't seem to be doing too well. Are the lights down by any chance? Over. Yes, quite a few of them do seem to be down due to the storm. Over. Any chance of them being repaired soon? Over. I wouldn't like to say. Most, Most winters, winters they stay that way until spring. spring. Is there anything else I can do for you, Mrs. Torrance? Over. I suppose not. Over. Well, if you folks have any questions, don't be afraid to give us a call. And Mrs. Torrance, I think it might be a good idea if you leave your radio on all the time now. Over. Okay, we'll do that. It was nice talking to you. Bye. Over and out. Just like pictures in a book, Danny. It isn't real. Come here a minute, Daka. Well, how's it going, Danny? Okay. Oh. Well, how do you like this place so far? I like it. Oh, good, you know. You know, I want you to like it here. I wish we could stay here for forever and ever and ever. Dad, you wouldn't have ever hurt Mommy and me, would you? No. Did your mother ever say that? That I hurt, hurt you? you? No, Dad. Danny. You know, I love you more than anything else in this whole world. But you, know, I, you know, I never do anything to hurt you. You, you know that, Danny, don't you? D yes, Dad. Good. Mom? Mom, are you in this? Be losing my mind. Everything's going to be alright. 